Justice was finally done. And for all those who share democratic values, who think that justice is a fundamental value that cannot be traded for whatever, this is a day of great, great joy. There is hope in Iran, and I would say in the whole of greater Middle East. And the name of this hope is very clear and very simple, and I think a lot of us understood it. It's called Maryam Rajavi. Aujourd'hui, la Cour européenne de justice de Luxembourg a rendu un verdict qui a annulé la décision commune du Conseil des ministres de l'Union européenne pour avoir placé le nom des modernes du peuple d'Iran sur la liste des organisations terroristes. C'est une grande victoire pour le peuple iranien et sa résistance et pour tous les défenseurs de la justice et de la liberté dans le monde. Cette victoire des modernes du peuple c'est la victoire des valeurs humaines et des acquis de l'humanité, notamment la reconnaissance du droit de résister pour la liberté. Il y a quelques années, un juriste français avait déclaré que si les modérés du peuple remportaient une victoire dans cette affaire, ce serait une victoire pour l'humanité. Aujourd'hui, les Mojahedins ont remporté cette victoire. Aussi, j'adresse mes félicitations au peuple d'Iran, aux Mojahedins du peuple de la cité d'Ashraf, à l'ensemble des défenseurs de la liberté des parlementaires et des juristes qui ont déployé beaucoup d'efforts durant toutes ces années pour la suppression de cette marque injuste. Merci à tous. l'indépendance de la Cour européenne et de ses honorables juges qui, loin de l'influence de la politique de complaisance, ont rendu justice en âme et conscience. Ce verdict témoigne de la légitimité, de la résistance du peuple iranien contre le fascisme religieux et de la victoire de la justice sur les marchandages avec la théocratie. Par conséquent, aujourd'hui, le monde est face à un défi de la part du fascisme religieux. À cause de leur incapacité à régler les problèmes internes et le mécontentement croissant de la population et pour retarder le renversement, les mollets exposent davantage l'intégrisme et les crises à l'étranger. La course à l'arme atomique, la domination de l'Irak, le bellicisme au Liban et l'opposition à la paix sont les maillons stratégiques du régime pour sa sombre. Quatre années de négociations et de concessions dans le domaine nucléaire ont montré que les mollahs ne veulent ni ne peuvent répondre aux demandes de la communauté internationale. Comme l'a dit le président des mollahs, il n'y a plus de temps. Un pas en arrière signifie notre disparition. Ce régime est trop faible pour pouvoir être flexible. La poursuite
ensuite les troupes en Irak et dans l'intérêt du régime, la stabilité et la démocratie en Iran et la paix au Proche-Orient sont fatales au régime iranien. Cela fait des années que les Mollahs investissent dans l'Irak comme un point stratégique pour l'exportation de l'intégrité et développer notre influence dans la région. Je l'ai dit et je le répète, la solution pour l'Iran ne se trouve ni dans une intervention militaire étrangère, ni dans la politique de complaisance. La solution dans la pratique est un changement démocratique par les Iraniens et leur résistance organisée. Dans cette voie, l'Europe doit se tenir aux côtés de Pokémon. Je vous remercie. I'd like to start by congratulating Mrs. Rajavi for the great victory which was achieved today in the European Court of Justice. And I also want to congratulate the People's Wadim members in Ashraf City. We have been saying this for several years, that inclusion of the People's Wadim in the terrorist list was for political reasons, without any factual base, and our judicial system showed that independence and justice was done. I think the European Union must face reality. The Iranian regime has no intention to giving up its nuclear program, and there is hardly any doubt that they are pursuing a weapons program. To my view, the European Union should change its approach to Iran. The most striking aspect of this change should be to the Iranian opposition movement, an approach to the Iranian opposition movement, the National Council of Resistance of Iran, and the People Mohadin's organization. The European Union should engage in dialogue and cooperation with the National Council of Resistance of Iran, and the EPP ED group invitation to Mrs. Rajami is a move in this direction. We should send a clear message to President Ahmadinejad and this message is that Europe and the international democratic community no longer would tolerate their aggressive and destructive policy. I attended the opening day of the Court of Presidents' case in the spring and was somewhat surprised to find that it was only the UK who had made the original application for the PMY to be placed on the EU terror list, following the appeasement policy, the failed appeasement policy of the then uh, Foreign Secretary Jack Straw, who has uh, visited Tehran on more occasions than any other city in the world apart from Brussels and Washington. And the mullahs were the people who asked Straw, <coughs> insisted to Straw that the PMY should be placed on the uh, EU terror list, and of course he acquiesced in his pursuit of appeasement at any price. But the policy of appeasement has been an abject failure. We've seen, as Mrs. Rajabi uh, highlighted, the uh, insurgency in Iraq is being fueled by uh, resources, by manpower, by sophisticated weaponry supplied by Iran. They finance Hamas. They were the puppet masters behind the Hezbollah war. Uh, in Lebanon against Israel. Uh, they are the fascist cancer that is beginning to envelop uh, the whole of the Middle East. And Mr. Blair, who took us into this mess uh, together with his great friend, Mr. Bush, his policy is now that we should talk to Iran. Has he never learned the lessons of history? In 1938, Mr. Chamberlain went to Munich and said to Hitler, of course we will give you Czechoslovakia in the name of peace in our time. Now Mr. Blair is saying to the mullahs, of course we will give you Iraq if we can have peace at any price. And this ludicrous policy will cause the kind of conflict that will envelop 
uh, the entire Middle East and perhaps the entire world. Yesterday, a thousand students at Tehran University uh, rioted when Ahmadinejad went to their campus and tried to address them. They held up pictures of Ahmadinejad and set them on fire and shouted at him, you're a liar, a fraud, and a dictator. And he and his bodyguards had to run from the campus. Now he has accused these brave students of being agents of the American imperialists. And assuredly, the student leaders, if not all of them, will be hunted down, arrested, tortured, and many of them will be executed by this regime that encourages freedom of speech. So these are the brave people who need a focus in opposition, a focus that can be provided by Mrs. Rajavi and the PMOI, and which was denied to them in the past because we ludicrously in the West handcuffed the PMOI by placing them on the EU terror list. That uh, terror tag has been removed today in a fantastic victory, and I, I can only hope now we can move forward to the alternative to appeasement or military intervention. And that alternative is backing the legitimate opposition to throw out the fascist mullahs and to replace them with a secular democratic regime observing human rights, women's rights, uh, and observing a, a humanitarian approach to democracy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.